Hi YouTube and welcome to the IoT Developer Masterclass. So it's uh, winter of 2023 and my son would like a flower garden. I guess that's a big problem. So he's the one going to be responsible for coordinating. I'm very sure of that and I'm going to be the one in trouble if the flowers die. So I decided to create a smart flower pot uh, that can monitor and ensure that these plants are well taken care of. And in the next few weeks, I'll be uploading multiple series of videos that show how IoT systems are created, while also showing the steps that I have taken to build my smart flower pot. Um, so I guess I don't get into trouble with my little son. Uh, but please feel free to like, comment, and share these videos, and we'll get right into it. Thank you. So um, in this um, class, um, we'll be using a couple of different languages, I think. Um, Expecting we'll be using Python, JavaScript, and um, Node.js. Um, and we'll, we might be adding some things to Google Cloud. It might change as the class goes on. Uh, things might change, but in general, these are what I'm currently expecting it will be using um, as we progress. So um, what is the Internet of Things? Uh, the Internet of Things is generally a network. A a chain of devices um, that can be monitored, um, controlled, and uh, you know, over long distances, sometimes over the network, you know, and can communicate. Um, uh, they can they can communicate together. Um, you know, usually this is over, could be over a LAN, WAN, your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, you know, whatever mode of communication you have, and um, you know, in in the in your site. So um, these devices would generally have. An input system. They would also have control systems. Um, you know, so they input like a sensor system where they collect data from a control system, like a um, actuator uh, or uh, a, a trigger mechanism that you, you could uh, trigger certain things to happen, and they can um, change environment. Uh, they can change the environment um, settings. You know. And a communication and notification system. Um, so if something were to go wrong, I definitely want an alert. If my my son's flower pots uh, actually lack water and something's wrong and the plant is dying, I'd probably like an alert um, to go off and send me a notification at some point. So uh, generally, they would have things like that. So um, what are the main goals of IoT devices? Uh, they generally used to improve productivity save time and in some cases with regard to automation and manufacturing um they, they've been known to save a lot of costs um the way businesses are being run um okay so we'll talk about various sectors where this where iot systems can be used so um you can have iot system and smart homes where you can control your lights um you know uh, you could talk to Alexa to control something or use your Google Home to control something in your in your house, you know, or your mobile phone sometimes over Bluetooth or over Wi-Fi. Uh, you can have smart cities and infrastructure where, you know, the city uses IoT systems that they have connected to monitor city infrastructure. It could be water, amount of water that goes into people's homes. It could be use of parks, stadium, stadium lighting garage, you know, how the garage is being used, you know, and they can, you know, get all that data from a central station. Um, it could also be smart hospitals, right? And, you know, they can monitor patients, you know, location of staff in the hospital, and, you know, just improve the speed generally of healthcare. Um, they also use the smart factories, right? So, um, you know, that's one of my favorite use cases of it, right? Improve productivity in factories, you know, automation of machines, you know, you could just, uh, the engineers can just sit back and relax and, you know, things are running. And if there's an alert, you get an alert, you know exactly where the problem's coming from and, you know, be able to, you know, sometimes also you could use it to forecast issues that might arise you know, based on the sensor um, reading. So you could have like machine learning algorithms that can uh, monitor systems and the factories and 
and you know give that you, you might be able to get forecasts and failures that could happen um you know before they happen uh based off of things that the the uh, algorithm detects right um you could also have them in transportation uh smart transportation where um you know you could use um data from uh from traffic lights, population, you know, accident histories, you know, if you use it to predict and improve transportation services that, um, you know, that, that, that people in the community would use, uh, you know. So um, we could also have it in smart agriculture. That's also one of the fun parts. I really love agriculture. Uh, I guess maybe one of, one of the reasons I want to apply this in the smart flower pots, but let's see. So, you know, in agriculture, they could be used to monitor soil nutrients, just like what we'll be doing with the smart flower pots as we go on with this uh, training. Um, we'll also, you know, um, be used to monitor weather, yield of crops over time, you know, track some certain machineries that, you know, instances where big tractors, um, you know, harvesters, and big machineries used in the farms are all connected to an IoT system, and they can be monitored and, you know, improve their efficiency, efficiencies, right? So, yeah, they could also use, uh, you also see IoT systems used in smart maritime uh, for shipping, um, oceans and fish management, you know, monitor, you know, um, you know, track locations of some of the ships that, you know, supply chain, ships that move around, carrying um, goods all over the world, you know, track migration patterns, you know, of like fishes and dolphins, aquatic animals, you know, in the, in the ocean. And, you know, generally used to study, you know, environmental changes and variables that change and, in, 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 you know, in the variables that change, you know, with, with um, living conditions in the water for these animals, right? And, you know, there's so many things that an IoT system can be connected to, and there's so many things it could be used for. Um, yeah, so what would we say are the key development considerations? So when, when building an IoT system, well, when building any software system at all, or anything that, you know, you have to kind of be very cautious about security. Uh, so security is very important. Uh, people are always gonna try to hack into your system and cause some harms. You know, and generally for security of the people, you know, privacy of the people whose information you have that your system is, you, you need to be careful, you need to consider security and privacy, very, very important um, things to consider. You know, so it, um, uh, you also have to consider, you know, uh, ensuring your your system is always available. Um, so you probably want to make sure that your system is built to scale properly, a distributed system, you know, something that can, uh, as you add more, um, as you add more devices or nodes into your network, it can grow and scale with it. Uh, you don't want to have, you maybe you monitor a critical component in a lab um, that's connected to an IoT system device that's tracking that data on the cloud. You, you don't want that to, uh, you know, if, if it's very critical, especially with something that maybe involves patient care, you, you don't want that to break halfway in or even something in the factory that would be a huge loss of uh, money. Um, one of the other things that I like to think about when developing IoT systems, is you, you have to try to make it interoperable. Um, so a lot of systems are built uh, specifically to a particular platform, but things change, you know, um, you might want to move your systems, you know, you might want to change things. You need to make it easy to be able to change things as new things come around, new technology come around, you know, you need to be able to easily adapt to those uh, new technology. Um, you know, you also need to make sure that um, in, in some cases that, you know, your system is flexible. So, uh, you know, I've built systems in the past where there are, um, there are multiple types of devices that connect to a central IoT platform. And, and so in these cases, your system has to be flexible to be able to adapt and take data from this individual platform. So you don't want to label things, you know, uh, you, know uh, you don't, you don't want to just give uh, labels that would make things difficult to change, you know, um, data, you know, especially if you're labeling a database basis, you, you don't want to label things that would make it your system not to be flexible, right? You need to make sure your system can um, adapt and take in different types of data, um, whatever type of data they would be in the future, right? So um, 
So now we will look at the building blocks of an IoT system. So um, it generally starts from the devices that you have um, on the site. So that that's, those are what you we would call the perception layer. Um, and it can start from anywhere generally, but I, I like to think of it that it starts from the perception layer. And the perception layer is that's where you have your sensors and actuators that collect environmental data and you know can act on commands so the sensors will collect environmental data and the actuators can act on those commands depending on um you know what change is needed to ensure that your system your um, the process that you're working on um you know um, works perfectly right so uh we also have the network uh transport layer um so generally look at this as the communication so that there needs to be some sort of communication uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth Zigbee to connect to others IOT systems or to connect to a local gateway you know or you know or you know connect to the cloud right or, you know so you might need some routers if you're using the internet you know um, to you know send traffic to the cloud so uh, there's also the processing layer um, so that's like the middleware so i'd say generally this is what you'd have um you know you could have this locally in your edge device or you could have this on the cloud so it's you know store analyze process data you know and just you know on the cloud you can also do some statistical um statistical or uh, machine learning models to understand data and make decisions based on that on those understanding um so there's also the application layer uh, and in the application layer um, we, we're talking about the applications that your users would use um, so generally you'd see uh, you know people use or you know cases where you use your mobile phones to control these systems you get a lot on your mobile phone or it could be on a web like on a website you can see the monitoring system see charts you know, or it could also be using smart watches or your Google Home to control your system. I, I do love using my Google Home to control my lights. You could just talk to it and, you know, it controls your lights and changes the color, switches it on or off, you know, depending on what you have or your temperature. Um, you, you, you could also use it for, your, you know, the thermometer's uh, temperature within your house to control the temperature. All right. So there's also the... Um, business layer of it and that's generally you know how you make money out of it so uh, generally when you're building a software system you know uh you know but especially uh you design a software system there's there's an area where you have to consider it is it marketable will you be able to sell you know uh, and make money out of it? so as you can see there's a lot that go into the development of iot systems and we barely just scratched the surface as we go on into this course, we'll look at various components and of IoT systems and try out a, a few coding sample examples, you know, um, as we build this system. Uh, so there will be some live coding sessions and all the code will be provided to you. So uh, feel free to follow along, like, comment and share these videos. Uh, in the next video, we will be discussing IoT architectures and we'll look at some simple uh, look at a simple design of an iot architecture uh thank you for staying till the end of this video uh, and we'll i'll see you in the next one thank you